ALK is pleased to bring you this educational video on penicillin allergy skin testing. Allergy to penicillin and related antibiotics is the most commonly reported drug allergy in the United States. However, approximately 90% or 9 out of 10 patients who report as penicillin allergic are not truly allergic when assessed by skin testing. The most common and underappreciated aspect of this problem is the unnecessary withholding of an appropriate antibiotic therapy, penicillin and related antibiotics, which leads to increased mortality, morbidity, and medical costs. This educational video is intended to provide an overview of penicillin allergy and an introduction to penicillin allergy skin testing with prepen, including both the scratch and intradermal portions of the test procedure. We will review the required supplies, procedure for conducting the test, and guidelines for interpretation. You will hear from an expert in the field of drug allergy, Dr. Roland Solinsky of the Corvallis Clinic in Corvallis, Oregon. Dr. Solinsky will review the value of penicillin allergy testing for patients, providers, and public health at large. Dr. Solinsky will provide a personal statement on the value of penicillin skin testing. In addition, you will view a description of the supplies needed to conduct penicillin allergy testing, as well as a full testing demonstration to assist practitioners in learning how to conduct and interpret the skin test procedure. Dr. Roland Solinsky, board-certified allergist, co-author of the Drug Allergy Practice Parameters and expert in drug allergy. I'm Dr. Roland Solinsky. I'm an allergist at the Corvallis Clinic in Corvallis, Oregon. I'll be speaking to you about penicillin allergy. Penicillin allergy is the single most common antibiotic or even medication allergy reported by, the, uh, by, by patients. And overall, a large studies have shown that about 10% of patients who come in to see a doctor have a label of being penicillin allergic. Some studies have a little bit higher, especially if patients are, fre are frequently ill or treated. But 10% is a good average number that one, one, one would expect to see um, patients coming in with a history of allergy. Importantly, when they're evaluated, however, um, only about 10% of those individuals who have a label turn out to actually be allergic following full evaluation with skin testing and a challenge with penicillin. Studies have shown that patients who are labeled as penicillin allergic end up receiving alternate antibiotics which might be problematic for a number of reasons. They may be more toxic, uh, they have more side effects than penicillin or beta-lactam antibiotics would. They may be less efficacious. For example, patients who have a penicillin allergy history very frequently receive macrolides or sulfonamides for sinus infections, ear infections, and those are not, not as efficacious. There's also a number of studies showing that they receive much more often broad spectrum, uh, big gun type antibiotics unnecessarily because again, most of them don't really need to receive those. Especially in the inpatient setting, it's known that they're much more likely to receive fluoroquinolones or vancomycin. In one particular study, it was twice as high. Patients who come into the hospital, you've got a, la a label of penicillin allergy, they were twice as likely to receive vancomycin and three times as likely to receive a fluoroquinolone. So it's not so much that other antibiotics can't be used nowadays, there's many other choices, but the ones that are used can be problematic. Additionally, many of these antibiotics I'm referring to are often more expensive than penicillin, which tends to be generic, is. So one thing the penicillin allergy also has been found to result in is increased medical costs. So it may compromise medical care and increase costs. So really the most important and underappreciated aspect of penicillin allergy is the unnecessary withholding of appropriate antibiotic therapy, which leads to increased mortality, morbidity, and increased um, m medical costs in patients who are labeled as penicillin allergic. Evaluating a patient for penicillin allergy consists of four simple steps. One, preparing the required supplies. Two, performing scratch testing. Three, conducting intradermal testing in a process similar to placing a PPD test. Four, offering an optional oral or IV challenge. The supplies required for penicillin allergy skin testing include the appropriate reagents, one prepen ampule, a dilute solution of penicillin G, 10,000 units per milliliter, histamine for positive control. It is important to make sure the patient has not taken antihistamines for at least 48 hours. Sterile saline diluent negative control. The appropriate skin testing devices. Four scratch testing devices such as Duotip Test 2, 
Four 26 to 28 gauge syringes with labels. It is important to label each syringe as you withdraw the reagents. Alcohol swabs, skin marking pen, reaction guide, timer, and skin test recording form. Although rare, the pre-pen test does have a risk of anaphylaxis. It is recommended that your facility have these supplies available in case of anaphylaxis. Stethoscope, sphygmomanometer, epinephrine, 1 to 1,000, corticosteroids, appropriate supplies for injections, antihistamines. No combination of testing can offer 100% diagnostic accuracy, so it is important to take a careful history when evaluating a patient for penicillin allergy. Patients with a history of recent or severe anaphylaxis to penicillin and negative skin tests to prepen and penicillin G should be managed very carefully, including introducing beta-lactam antibiotics with gradual dose escalation in a safe environment, or when medically appropriate, continue to use alternative antibiotics. If the patient has a clear history of severe skin reactions such as Stevens-Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis, he or she should not undergo penicillin skin testing including prepen, since such testing may reactivate their disease. Penicillin allergy skin testing is relatively straightforward and is accomplished via both scratch and intradermal testing. It is important to begin the procedure with scratch testing as a screening test. This is conducted with prepen, a dilute solution of penicillin G, histamine positive control, and diluent negative control. It is recommended to place the scratch tests on the volar aspect of the patient's forearm for best results. First, clean the skin with an alcohol swab to prepare the testing surface. Next, mark the skin to clearly identify where each reagent will be placed. This is an important step to make sure the results are accurately interpreted and to avoid cross-contamination. The histamine test is commonly marked with a plus sign to indicate the positive control. The saline diluent test is commonly marked with a minus sign to indicate negative control. The prepen test is commonly marked as PRP, while the penicillin G test is commonly marked simply as PG. Once the test placement area has been clearly marked, use the appropriately labeled syringes to place one drop of reagent onto the skin in the correct area. After the drop is placed, use a scratch testing device, such as the Duotip Test 2 device, to scratch the surface of the skin. The recommended technique is a simple down and twist. You will only need to apply minimum pressure to break the top layer of skin. Once all the reagents are placed and the scratch testing has been conducted, set a timer for 15 to 20 minutes. You will need 15 to 20 minutes for the test sites to develop in order to accurately read the results it is important to remember to read the results within 15 to 20 minutes of placing the tests, as results can wane after 20 minutes. After 15 minutes, you can begin reading and measuring the results using the reaction guide. To read the results, you may need to blanch the skin a little to create a flatter surface to place the reaction guide and measure the skin test results. It is important to read the histamine result first, as a positive reaction to the histamine is a requirement for the testing procedure to move forward and to be considered an accurate test. If, after 15 minutes, you do not see a distinct bleb and some flare at the site of the histamine test, the patient has likely recently taken antihistamines, and the test for penicillin allergy should be stopped and conducted on another day because results will not be valid. If, after 15 minutes, you see a histamine wheel with some itching and flare around the test site, it is safe to move forward with reading the results. This means the patient is reactive to the histamine and the test results will be valid. Interpretation of the test result is based on comparison to the negative or diluent control. The criteria for a positive scratch test is an induration of greater than 3 millimeters than the diluent control. If you see an induration of greater than 3 mm than the saline control on the prepen or penicillin G test sites, the patient should be considered positive for penicillin allergy, and the testing should be concluded. If you do not see an induration of greater than 3 mm than the diluent control, the scratch testing results can be considered negative, and it is safe to move on to the intradermal portion of the test. In this example, we see the patient's prepen and penicillin G test sites show no growth or flare so it is safe for the practitioner to move ahead to the intradermal portion of the testing. Once you have interpreted the results, record them on the skin test recording form or a similar record and proceed to the intradermal portion of testing. 
Upon negative scratch testing results, the next step in the testing process is intradermal testing with prepen, penicillin G, and a negative saline diluent control. Intradermal testing for penicillin allergy is very similar to TB testing. You will simply raise a bleb using the appropriate reagent, circle a perimeter, and watch for growth beyond that original bleb size. It is important to note that intradermal testing for penicillin allergy is done in duplicate for both the prepen and penicillin G reagents. It is not required to place a duplicate test for the negative control site. Intradermal testing can be done on the forearm opposite to where the scratch testing was performed or on the back of the upper arm, which can be more comfortable for patients. To begin, prepare the testing site by cleaning the skin with alcohol. Then, carefully mark the skin to identify the placement of prepen, labeled as PRP, and penicillin G, labeled as PG, test sites, being careful to remember the requirement of conducting these intradermal tests in duplicate. Also, mark the site to identify the placement of the saline diluent control site, which does not require a duplicate. Using the pre-labeled prepen syringe, carefully place duplicate 2 to 3 mm sized blebs of solution just under the skin in the pre-marked area. Once the 2 to 3 mm blebs are placed, circle the perimeter of the blebs to identify the original size. This is very important to interpreting the results. It may be necessary to blanch the skin in order to get an appropriate surface for injecting the bleb. Follow the same procedure to place the 2 to 3 mm blebs for the penicillin G portion of the test in duplicate. Once the prepen and penicillin G blebs are raised, proceed to the saline diluent control, which can be applied in singlicate. Upon placing the blebs and circling the perimeter, set your timer for 15 to 20 minutes. It is very important to read the result within 15 to 20 minutes of placing the tests, as any reactions may wane after 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes after test placement, it is time to read the results using the reaction guide provided. The criteria for a negative intradermal skin test is no increase in the size of the original bleb and no reaction greater than the control site. The criteria for a positive intradermal skin test is significant increase in the size of the original bleb with wheel diameter 3 mm or larger than the diluent control. Itching and flare are commonly present. Rarely, an equivocal intradermal result may be seen with the wheel only slightly larger than the original injection bleb and control site, or with discordant results between the duplicate placements. In this case, repeat intradermal testing and take concordance of 3 out of 4. In our example, the patient has tested negative for penicillin allergy, as all of the intradermal blebs show no growth beyond the original size and no growth beyond the diluent control site. This patient can be labeled as not penicillin allergic. Upon completion of negative scratch testing as well as negative intradermal testing, an optional oral or ingestion challenge may be given to the patient. Commonly, providers will challenge with the antibiotic treatment of choice and observe the patient for up to one hour in a supervised setting. This is an optional testing step but can help to reassure the patient of their ability to tolerate a specific antibiotic treatment. In summary, Penicillin allergy testing is conducted via both scratch and intradermal testing, followed by an optional oral or ingestion challenge. Testing can be completed in about one hour and is considered a safer alternative to jumping straight to a dose challenge. Skin testing for penicillin allergy can be conducted in both in- and outpatient settings in various departments within your facility or clinic. Implementing penicillin skin testing with prepen into your hospital's protocol brings benefits to the patients, healthcare providers, and to the community at large, including lowering treatment costs for patients and health systems, combating the increase of drug-resistant organisms, improving antibiotic stewardship, providing access to safe, well-tolerated treatment options. Thank you for your time and interest in learning about the value of penicillin allergy testing with prepen. Contact ALK for additional information, including the full package insert, implementation support materials, in-person training options, and other resources to help you begin a penicillin allergy testing program at your hospital. Remember, test before you treat. Visit us online at www.prepen.com.